come on in everyone come on in because we are here for season one episode 10 i never ever met we almost at the end y'all i thought this was going to be the last episode but it looks like we got one more episode because they are dragging out this proposal with aaron and diamond to the very very end Maybe it's going to be the only proposal that we get. Everybody else may be get a necklace or something. And Shay may get a, um, a lease to sign in Texas. But it looks like the only proposal we're going to get is from Aaron and Diamond. But we're going to get to that too because they are calling this episode. What are they calling this episode? Uh, they are calling it um, moving out and moving on. Moving out and moving on because folks is ready to go. <laughs> Folks is tired of this house. They are tired of being here with these people, especially a diamond and um, diamond and Aaron. They said they're ready to go. They tired of these young people. They came in here, thought they were going to be the mama and the daddy, the auntie and the uncle. And these young people weren't having it. Not one bit, but we're going to get into all this because there's actually a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about. And y'all know that I love a theme. Now that I got my little green screen, toy i love a theme but it's really just like in my real life y'all whenever i give a party um in my real life i love a theme i really love a theme so um i couldn't decide on my theme this week you guys i couldn't decide on one backdrop so you're gonna have to bear with me this week you have to bear with me because what i'm gonna be doing is i'm gonna be changing my backdrop to fit whatever i'm talking about because i got a lot of scenes i want to talk about it was so much going on but the first couple I got to get to is going to be Jody and Aaron. Because like my thumbnail said, the best kiss ever. But we want to know which one was the best kiss. Was the best kiss the one with Sandia? Or was the best kiss the one with Aaron? And we're going to get to that too. But the episode first started back in the therapy office. So that's where we're going to go first. We're going back to the therapy office with Jody and and Dr. Alley, and I mean to tell you, Dr. Alley, <laughs> bravo to you. Bravo to you. Because it seems as if you have opened up some doors for um, Jody that she didn't even know she needed opening up. We all could see that the doors needed opening up. We all could see it. But um, Jody couldn't see it. Jody couldn't see the doors that she needed to be opened up. And I was happy to see that Dr. Allie really went deep with her and really made her start thinking because I think Jody wants to blame a lot of this stuff going on in her life on other people. And I think what Dr. Allie really pointed her in the direction of was you really need to get in touch with your wants, your desires, who you are, Jody, because without that, you can't move forward. You can't move forward. All of this trying to deny that you want a loving relationship. Dr. Ali is telling her, the more you deny it, the more you're going to be in disarray. The more your life is going to be in disarray, the more you're going to be out of alignment. And let me tell you something. There are a lot of people running around denying the fact that they're lonely or that they want a partner in their life or they want someone else in their life. It's almost as if society has told women that you have to be so strong, that you have to do life on your own, that you can't desire a mate, that you can't desire love. So when women feel that inside of them, it conflicts with this other part of them and then they feel like they're weak. Like Jody says, I don't want to show any emotions. I don't want to cry. I don't want to do this. And she's kind of trying to blame it all on her sexual, all on her uh, sexual trauma. And I'm telling you right now, it started way before then. It started way before that. That just becomes the convenient answer out in the world. You see, when Jody encounters people and they see all this disarray in her life and they see everything that's going around, Jody's decided I got to come up with an answer for these people because like Jody says, she's complex and she's difficult. You see, Jody said she is complex and she is difficult. And when people see her and say, you're complex and you're difficult and I don't want to be around you. And they say, why are you this way? What is the best answer you can come up with? You got to come up with an answer 
that makes it seem like it's not your fault, that you really don't have anything to do with it. And let me tell you what that answer becomes with is what Jody said, it's because of my sexual trauma. Now, is her sexual trauma playing a role in all this? I do. I think it is playing a role. But here's the thing. Who were you before the sexual trauma, Jody? Were you just this woman intact and just everything right? And then you had the sexual trauma? No. You see, therein is the problem because what Jody wants to continue to go back to is the sexual trauma and how she became a sexologist. But what she doesn't want to go back to is she doesn't want to go back before the sexual trauma. And to be honest with you, that's really where she needs to go. But I want to commend Dr. Allie, commend Dr. Allie on even getting her to the point of where she is now, because it looks like after 30 something years, even Jody hadn't done the work she did with Dr. Allie in just this one hour session. Imagine what she could do if she had enough time with a therapist. Look what Dr. Allie was able to do with her. Look what she was able to unlock with her in just a, maybe a one hour or two hour session with her. She really needs to sign up. Instead of going and signing up to become professional sexologist, Jody needs to go and Jody needs to sign up with a, with a therapist for multiple sessions. Jody says that the reason she and Aaron are together is because they both have in common this creativity. They both believe that marriage is a business. Now, and I'm about to get vindicated by all you people out here who've been telling me all season long, stop calling little Aaron gay or bisexual. I'm about to get vindicated because I'm about to change my backdrop from the therapy office to this right here, the closet. That's what I'm changing it to. Because I knew that Aaron was in a closet somewhat. Now we find out so is Jody. So when Jody and Aaron talk about all the things they have in common and that they've narrowed it down to business and creativity, I'm going to add another thing to the list. They're both bisexual, which is okay. But let's talk about it. Let's be honest about it. Let's say it. The reason Jody is with Aaron is because what she says is she's complex She's difficult. And what the complexity also comes to with this is her sexual orientation. It's complex. It's difficult. And what she said was, not everyone's going to put up with it. Not everyone's going to be able to deal with it. But you know who can deal with it? Another bisexual man. Because he understands it. Because he's just as creative and he's just as business oriented. You see... Aaron already knew about Jody's probably bisexuality and he accepted it because what I believe is that Aaron is bisexual too. He understands Jody. You know, there was a scene last, I don't know if it's a clip or something. And when they were playing the never have I ever game and they said, never have I ever kissed my best friend. And Aaron said, I did. Maybe his best friend was a male. Um, the evidence is mounting up that both of these people are bisexual. The evidence is mounting up and this in here is what has kept them together because their complexity, as Jody was saying, the, the, will everyone accept me? Will a heterosexual man accept me as a bisexual woman? Right? Sure. Some may, but some may not. Okay. But here we have, what is my best bet to be with a man who he himself is bisexual. He understands me. But yet, Jody, yet, Jody, you're not attracted to Aaron. You're not attracted to him. In fact, Aaron, Jody may be describing herself as bisexual in this moment, but there could be a case to be made that she's not even bisexual, that she actually prefers women anyway. Because this kiss, the best kiss ever, the best kiss ever, um, it was clear that she, she way more enjoyed the kiss with Sandia than she did with Aaron. Way more enjoyed it. And let me tell you, she enjoyed the kiss with Sandia more than Aaron. And Sandia really didn't even want to kiss her. So here she has a woman in front of her that doesn't want to really kiss her. She has a man who really wants to kiss her. Okay. She has a man that accepts her bisexuality. She has a man that wants to love on her. But somehow or another... Jody likes to kiss with the woman better. Jody, Jody, Jody. 
Like I said, before she gets with anyone, whether it be a man or a woman, she needs to figure out her sexuality. She needs to figure out everyone else. Because let me tell you, it's confusing. It's not only confusing her, it's probably confusing everyone that she meets because they don't understand and they don't know what's going on. And it's not like anyone's going to judge her for it. But what people need to know is they need to know what do you like? What's your preference? What's going on? So I can decide if we're a good fit for each other. But what Jody wants to do is Jody wants to run around, not define any of these things. I know I don't want to define it. That's fine. Don't define it, but then don't get mad when people are not understanding what's going on. You see, what I actually believe that surrounded this sexual trauma, I'm going to go back further because I think that Jody's complexities, difficulties, and everything else started before the sexual trauma. And I believe that the sexual trauma came, a re came as a result of her complexities and not what's going on because Jody sends mixed messages. In one way, she shuns Aaron, but then says, yes, yeah, she can see a future with him. In one way, she tries to steal Sandia's man, but then she wants to kiss Sandia. See, I can imagine a lot of scenarios where Jody talks about things. She's a sexologist. She likes all things sexual. But then when you see her in positions and you see her when they were doing this genuine, you know, <laughs> pony ride, she didn't like it but she's so-called a sexologist, people get confused. Do you like men? Do you like women? Do you like both? Are you down for threesomes? Are you not down for threesomes? Did you have a threesome and then all of a sudden in the middle of a threesome, people are thinking you are down and, and you are open to a lot of different things sexually and did it go left in the bedroom? Did something go left? Because Jody sends a lot of mixed messages. What happened? I'm not excusing any type of sexual trauma. No means no. Stop means stops. I get it. I really do get it. But what I want to know with Jody, because Jody has now told us she has been twice sexually assaulted. Twice. What I want to know, is there anything the way that Jody is moving and shaking in the world that is putting her in extra danger? Does it mean a person has a right to violate her? Absolutely not. But what I want to know with Jody, and this is why she needs to go back before her sexual trauma, in this not knowing what she wants to be, do I want to be with a man? Do I want to be with a woman? Do I want both of them at the same time? Do I want to be out here trying new things sexually? All of that. Do you find yourself in positions where you have one idea of how you think this sexual encounter is going to go? But it's not clear to the other people. And so what happens is you're in the middle of this sexual encounter. And now all of a sudden you're saying, no, you don't want it. This isn't what you want. But the other person is confused. And now what you feel like you're doing is you're doing something sexually that you didn't want. And then the person doesn't listen to you saying stop. And the person doesn't listen to you saying no. And then that there becomes your sexual trauma. But it can start with something that can be simple as Jody needs to figure out who she is so she can communicate that to people. She walks around talking about boundaries. But to be honest with you, I don't really even know what Jody's boundaries are because Jody sat over here and listened to Chris. When Chris said, Jody, I want you and Sandia to Chris kiss. He basically outed Jody. Well, maybe everyone else knew she was bisexual. I don't know. He outed her. And then he told her, I want you and Sandia to kiss. Well, you got a man telling you what to do sexually with your body. I thought Jody had all these boundaries. I thought Jody didn't want men telling her what to do with her body. I thought she was putting fences and walls around her when it came to Aaron. But all of a sudden now, when she gets the opportunity to kiss a woman, her eyes light up. She's so excited. And now she's not worried one bit. One bit about boundaries. She's willing to sit here and listen to pimp daddy Chris tell her what to do and she does it. Does she do it because it's what she wants to do? Is she doing it because she's just following the directions of Chris? Where are the boundaries now, Jody? Where are the boundaries? All this closeted behavior between Jody and Aaron, all of it yields a lot of confusion. And some people say, well, it's no one else's business. Well, it is when you're dealing with them. 
It is other people's business when you're dealing with them. Because when you come into a new relationship with someone else and there's confusion and there's misunderstandings, it causes chaos. It causes chaos. So no, there is a problem when you sit in a closet and you don't express who you are honestly and truthfully to other people who you're trying to engage with in a romantic way. It is a problem. Now, do you owe me an explanation? No, because I'm not having sex with you. I'm not looking for a relationship with you. But when you're involved with other people, it matters. It matters. And I believe, I can really tell you, that I don't know if Jody's bisexual. I think she might just be a lesbian, period. And that is causing confusion to Aaron. Because Aaron is thinking it's about him. Aaron is thinking it's about him. What do I need to do? And she sits there and she keeps saying, yeah, well, well, a marriage is a business deal. Marriage is a business deal. It's not for love. Well, because love can go away. Girl, businesses can fail. Your whole uh, argument doesn't even make any case. You're trying to justify getting married to a person to be beards for each other, whatever it is. Because you say it's all business, it's not about love. And you justify it and say, because love is fleeting. Love doesn't stay. So when love goes away, at least we'll have the business. Girl, businesses fail faster than, lo than love does. I know the divorce rate is high. I know the divorce rate is 50% out here. But let me tell you, the business failing rate is higher than 50%. 50%. So if you're getting married for business because you think business doesn't fail, but love, but love does fail, you're even wrong with that. It's a cover up. Like I said, we in the closet because none of this is making sense. This is Jody's mind to twist a whole lot of things around so she doesn't have to admit that she's a lesbian, right? That all make who knows? Maybe the sexual trauma happened during the course of time where it was a threesome. Maybe Jody really only wanted to have sex with the woman and the man intruded. And he did things to Jody that she wasn't down with and that she didn't want because maybe she really only wanted it with the woman. But here she is trying to say she's bisexual. Here she is trying to say that she's a sexologist. She's sending wrong messages and then people get confused. Jody, figure it out. Figure it out so you can be clear and honest to anyone else and you can go on and have a happy, healthy relationship. But until Jody gets healthy, her relationships ain't going to be healthy. Toxicity in you, you, all you do is bring the toxicity to a relationship. Jody thinks her answer is in everyone else and drawing boundaries. No, her answer is in herself. Jody, like she said, when she finally walked away from Dr. Alley, she got a lot of work to do. She does. And she does not to be she does not need to be doing this work inside of a relationship. She needs to be doing it outside of a relationship. She needs to stop focusing on being a sexologist. Okay? So she can create another cover of why she's into women. You don't need to be in sexology just to be a lesbian, Jody. Just say you a lesbian. What is the big freaking deal? It's 2020. Four. But now that we done with Jody and Aaron and we ready to move on to our next room, where are we going to go to next, y'all? Where are we going to go to next? Well, we're going to go over to Sandy and Chris and we're going to move from the closet of Jody Aaron to the puppet closet. That's where we're going to go because let me tell you, Sandia, you ain't nothing but a puppet of Chris. If Sandia don't see this control manipulation on this, you know what? <laughs> Chris is on a manipulation train and he is grooming this woman to be controlled. He basically just told her, I want you to stay at home and do nothing. I want to control all the money. I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all, if you didn't watch my video midweek last week, when I said that Chris wants a woman that does not have any high earning potential because what Chris wants her to do is not have any ability to out earn him period period that's what he wants he sat up here and told this woman i really don't want you to work i want you to be a stay-at-home mom but then he said he only wanted one child <laughs> what i want to only have one child 
but I want you to stay at home and be a stay at home mom and I want to take care of you. No, you don't want any children really. You don't want that many children. Like you said, you want one, but you don't, you want her to be a stay at home mom because you don't want her to have any children, any money. <laughs> Let's not talk about, you don't want more than one child. You don't want her to make any money. And he said, I know you have this dream of being a nurse, but I want you to give it up. Like I told y'all in that video to be with Chris, if you have any dream of making any kind of money, anything, and let me tell you, nurses make a lot of money and they have potential to make as much money, depending on what, what level of nursing you go to nurse practitioners to make sometimes as much as doctors make. They got a lot of potential. Chris ain't going to have it. Chris is not trying to have Sandia make more money than him. And do we think Chris can take care of Sandia? I don't think so. But Sandy is talking about, yeah, I'll give it all up if you're going to pay all the bills and I just take care of the house with my one child. Because let me tell you what else I just confirmed. Because what Sandia said is, I've got to stop depending on my parents. Boom, there it is. So Sandia is 30 something years old. And what we're finding out is Sandia is financially supported by her parents, which is no problem. Okay, that's fine. So now that I know why Sandia is with Chris, because what she's looking at Chris is, it's a way in the interim for me to stop depending on my parents and I can start depending on Chris for the money. I'm quite sure this happens in a lot of cultures, Haitian cultures, uh, maybe African cultures where the woman is still financially dependent on the parents until she becomes married to a man. They marry her off and now the, and now the husband takes care of her. That's fine. I understand it. I, I understand it completely. But with that transition, what is Sandia signing up for? She's signing up to be a puppet of Chris because Chris is pretty clear that what the reason why he wants to provide for Sandia is not because he loves Sandia and he wants the pride and honor of being able to provide for his family. Chris's real motivation is control because let me tell you this little thing that he did telling Sandia and Jody to kiss was out of order and out of line. And what he showed to Sandia is, I don't do things for you, Sandia, because like Sandia said, Chris knows she's not into that. But yet what Chris did was Chris asked her to do it. No, actually Chris didn't ask her to do it. He told her to do it. And that puppet Sandia did exactly what Chris said. Exactly what Chris said. So there you go. He's grooming her. He's testing her boundaries. And what Sandia believes is, well, I know he's testing me to see if I would do it or not. He's testing my boundaries. But instead of showing him in that moment, no, I've got boundaries and I'm going to tell him no. Instead, what Sandia did is I'm going to go along with it and do it anyway. Well, here, there's the problem. It's the same thing I said about Jody. People who walk around who say they have boundaries, but when it comes time, to you to exert those boundaries you don't and then what you complain about is you've done something you don't want to do and now the person is taking advantage of you maybe you want to have boundaries but you really don't maybe that's the real story a lot of people want to say they have boundaries and their boundaries were violated maybe the real story is you have boundaries in your head but you don't know how to put up those boundaries you don't know how to exert those boundaries so people actually view you as a person with no boundaries that's how you come out in the world because Sandia can sit over here all day long and tell us about the boundaries that she has and how Chris knows she's not that woman. Chris knows you can't talk to her this kind of way. Chris knows she don't want to kiss a woman. Chris knows this. Chris knows that. But anytime Chris tells her something to do, her boundaries go out the window. And what does Sandia do? Sandia becomes what my backdrop is, a puppet. A puppet don't have no boundaries. A puppet does whatever the puppeteer wants it to do chris can do whatever he wants plan all these fantastic dates go on horseback riding tell the woman that she love that he loves her and all these other things he can give all the lip service he wants to give but when you see the way he moves you see the way he shakes it is clear what he is doing he's talked about it with this last woman of uh eight years she was a paralegal, became an attorney, and then it became a problem because she made more money than him. Here you have Sandia in nursing school, a nursing student, maybe just having another job just, that just kind of pays the bills. 
but she's on her way to become a nurse, which is going to be make more money. It's no different than the story, the relationship he was in eight years ago, Sandia. What is the difference, Sandia? You think you're different, Sandia. You're not different. And the reason and what Chris is doing is he's trying to prevent Sandia from becoming what that other woman was which is a higher level, making more money. He's telling Sandia, you don't need to become a nurse. I will take care of you. Really, Chris? I want you to be a stay-at-home mother, but I really only want one child. And Chris and Sandia was like, well, if I could stay, be a stay-at-home mother and then I can have a business on the side. No, 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 no. Sandia, you're not listening. Sandia, you're not listening. No, you can't be a stay-at-home mother with a business on the side. You can't be a stay-at-home mother, part-time nursing. You can't do any of that. You have to be a stay-at-home mom, period. That's it. That's it, Sandia. That's the whole agreement. Take it or leave it. He does not want a businesswoman. He does not want a woman who's a nurse. He does not want a woman who makes any source of money because Chris wants to stay in control all the time. He is a puppeteer and he wants you to be his puppet. Sandia better wake up. She better wake up fast before she finds herself in a position in which she loses options. If she keeps finding herself in the positions to constantly have to lower her standards, lower her boundaries for the fear of not pleasing Chris. Because right now, all Sandia does is does whatever Chris says in order to please him so she can get what she really wants and what she really wants and what she really wants is to be married with a family, but it doesn't have to come this way. It doesn't have to come this way. Like someone said in my comments last week, Chris ain't the only Haitian in town, Cynthia. I can understand if you want to marry a Haitian man, but he ain't the only Haitian man in town. There's got to be more. There's got to be more they're not willing and wanting to do to you what Chris is willing and wanting to do. Sandia, run, Sandia. Run, run, run. Talk about running. Talk about running. We about to run over here to the next couple. And I got the right shirt on. I got my purple rain print shirt on for the 90s party because that's where we going, y'all. We going to the 90s party with Millie and Greg. And um, do we think they going to make it, y'all? I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for her. But I tell you, this Millie, I'm going to start calling Millie the one kiss Millie. <laughs> do y'all do y'all notice how when Greg and Millie kiss, the most she'll kiss him is one peck? One. When he comes in for that second peck, Millie turns her cheek. It's almost as if it's so difficult for Millie to even let Greg kiss her that when she does kiss him, it's really one peck. I see it so often. I see that they go in, they kiss each other. And then when he's trying to do like, you know, you know how you do that little follow up kiss, like, you know, or you want to, or you want the second kiss to linger a little longer on the lips. Millie pulls back. She turns her head. It's really, really something. And I don't know if it's because Millie needs a lot more baby steps. One thing we realized is that online dating was a safe space for Millie. Now we kind of know why they could be in the same city, live 30 minutes apart. Millie says she loves to travel, but she can't travel 30 minutes to see Greg. She didn't want to see Greg. Millie's safe spot is online. She really is. And what I'm really concerned about, Greg is saying now that he has a lot of patience for Millie, that he wants to be with her. The direction he wants to be is with her. He's laying out a plan. He's laying out a goal. He's saying all the right things. I hope he has the endurance because I think it's going to take a lot with Millie. I think Millie, like I said, has a lot of trauma going on. And just like I said with Jody, Millie also wants to say her trauma started when she was sexually assaulted. I don't think it did. I think it started before then. And to tell Millie, just like I said with Jody, goes back and figures out the genesis of it. She's going to keep blaming it on this sexual trauma, but really the genesis of it, the beginning of it is way before then. It's way before then. And um, I'm a root for them. They, they sure look good together, though. They, they're a good looking couple and they really do look good together. And I hope that they can make it. I mean, of all the couples, they live close together. So there isn't no there aren't any big moves they have to make to move to each other's city. But I'm really concerned about who Millie is. 
Can Millie hold it together? Part of me doesn't think that she can. Part of me thinks that Greg is in over his head. I think Greg wants to be with Millie. I think he wants to make it work with Millie, but I'm not for sure he really knows what he's dealing with with Millie. And I think that Millie is always just below the surface before she's ready to go off. As long as everything is going in the direction Millie wants, everything is going the way she wants, she's getting gifts on his birthday, I think she'll be fine. But the minute something doesn't go the way she wants, I think there's a problem. Because even on this birthday planning weekend, honestly, I'm trying to figure out... <laughs> I guess Millie did plan it. I don't know. She didn't do any of the decorating. I guess she organized the people. They did all the decorating at home. And then she went to dinner with Greg. And then she said, I hope you don't think I'm paying for this. And then she got a gift. <laughs> I don't know. Did Millie really do anything? I don't know. Can Millie say she did anything because she came up with the idea to throw a party for Greg because she didn't do any of the decorating. I don't know. She went to dinner. She told Greg she's not paying for dinner. And then Greg gave her a gift, saltwater pearls, on his birthday. <laughs> that Millie, I tell you, good for you, Millie. You sure know how to turn things around. But that thin, that thin, I'm telling you right there, is what I'm a bit concerned about. That's what I'm a bit concerned about. I don't know if this has the longevity to make it. Because one is, I don't think that Millie is an overly giving and caring person. But I think it's going to take a lot of giving and patience from her partner. And will it come to a point where a partner will feel like they're giving and they're giving and they're giving and they're not getting anything back from Millie? They're not getting back. They're not getting anything back from one kiss Millie because they've been in this house now for what, 15 days or two weeks. And all Greg can get from Millie is one kiss before she turns away and turns her head or goes on to something else. I don't know. I don't know. It ain't looking good to me, y'all. I'm going to tell you right. I'm going to be straight up and straight honest. It's not looking good to me. And we're going to move on because I'm, we're going to move on to another area that ain't looking all that good to me. <laughs> and you know who it is? A Josh and Shay. Because y'all know from the very beginning, I don't, I don't trust Josh. I think Josh tells half truths. And before we get going, before I get really shady, we want to say rest in peace to his friend Warren who appeared on this show who unfortunately we find out uh, passed away, okay, uh, right after this show. So they kind of did like a eulogy to him and a memory of him. Um, I don't know how he passed away, but um, it might have been health related because he was a bit overweight. Um, so, uh, but whatever the reason was, a rest in peace, Warren. Uh, my condolences to Josh. Um, but as we move on, to what room are we going to go to with Josh? We're going to go to the room where y'all wanted me to go to last week. And we're going to the dentist's office. <laughs> oh, we on the petty train. We on the petty train. I know y'all. <laughs> y'all been talking about Josh's teeth all season. I really wanted to stay away from it. I really wanted to stay away from it. But just for kicks. Just for kicks. We're going to sit here in the dentist's office just for a little bit. Just for a little bit. Because it is going to be a plea. Uh, for Josh, yeah, Josh, yeah, go ahead on and um, go get those teeth fixed. I know they're talking about moving from Florida to Texas. Does Texas have better health care, be better dental health, dental care? <laughs> Is Florida don't have no good dental health care plan? Maybe Texas does. Um, maybe Texas has a better dental health care. We're going to want Josh to go on over there and, and take care of that. But let me get off the petty train. Let me get off the dentist's office. That was just for fun. That's just for kicks. We're going to come back to where they really were, which was in the tattoo shop. Okay, the tattoo shop. We back at the tattoo shop. They get these matching tattoos. And um, that's fine because the matching tattoos, it wasn't as if, you know, that can't be anything anywhere else. So do we believe that Josh and Shay are going to move to Texas? <sighs> My gut says no. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And it's a be, it'd be good to be wrong. Because I remember at the beginning of the season, what Josh said is, I've got two kids in Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm not leaving them. I'm not leaving them. So now he says, I'm going to leave them. So all of a sudden, you're going to leave your two kids because of Shay, because you're in love with Shay. Is that what you're saying? I know love makes men do things. And man, so now I'm wondering, Josh, are you just giving lip service? Because let me tell you, one thing that Josh has said every episode 
Shay and I are the front runner couples. We're the best couple. We're the best couple. It's almost like Josh just wants to win the game. He told Warren this. He tells everybody this. We're the couple that everybody idolizes. We're the couple that everybody thinks we're the front runner. It's like that's Josh's thing. So is he just saying he's going to move to Texas just so he can appear that he's the one that's going to take it to the end? Because when all of a sudden they start talking about getting married, like the sister said, Shay's sister said, well, what's the hold up? You've been talking online for 12 years. So now you want to move to Texas without being married? Shay, don't move to don't move to Texas without being married. Don't do that. Don't leave your family, your job and everything you got going to move to Texas with a man who says, I don't even want to marry you to a couple of years. Shay, you better look at his history. He's already had two kids, ain't married, not one of them women. Why would he marry you? Because he loves you. You don't think that Josh didn't tell those other women at any point in time he loved them. He may sit here now and say he don't love them women. But do you really believe that when he was in relationships with those women, he never told those women that, that he loved them? Are you just believing what Josh told you? So he had two women, two different baby mamas. One of them he called the roommate. He didn't even, he didn't have enough to even tell you that that might've been his girl, his girlfriend. He called her the roommate and you willing to move your whole life to Texas over a man that has two children by two different women, never married in the woman, has already lied to you about this whole Alexis thing, has already lied to you, had a baby on you. And now he's sitting here saying, yeah, after we the best couple up here, but after 12 years and sitting in the boom, boom room for 13 out of the 15 days, I want to put our marriage on hold for 12 years I mean for two more years what for what for no Shay you don't need to move Josh gonna need to put up or shut up you need to stop putting up I didn't even like the fact that Shay went first and getting a tattoo I would have made him go first you go first Josh I'm not going first and getting some tattoo and then you decide you don't want it no you go first why is Shay always the one that's got to go first Shay better wake up. Shay better wake up too. I wouldn't be doing no more with Josh. Josh would need to do a whole lot more for me before I do anything else. Shay been the one sitting around waiting on Josh for 12 years. Shay is the one that sat to sit through a, a, a baby and another, uh, another baby and another woman. Shay is the one that's been embarrassed and had to listen to these partial truth and partial lies with Josh. And now Shay going to pick up her whole life and go to Texas. And now all of a sudden he's saying, yeah, I'm willing to leave my two kids behind your precious kids that you didn't want to leave behind. Now you're over here flapping your gums. So much you're going to move to Texas. What? The only reason you need to move to Texas, if they got better health care, dental care, that's it. Josh would have to do a whole lot more for me to pack my bags a whole lot more. And now we move on to talk about packing bags. <laughs> Who else was ready to pack their bags? Diamond and Aaron. Diamond and Aaron said we ready to pack our bags because this little 90s party that y'all having. Um, <laughs> Diamond and Aaron are like me. They need to have a 70s party. <laughs> me and you, Diamond and Aaron, y'all with me. Because let me tell you, that party was definitely a party for the young people. But that's okay. That's okay. And instead of Aaron and Diamond turning up their nose, they need to do what the aunties and uncles normally do when the young people want to have their fun. They say, you know what? We're going to let you young people have your phone fun. We're going to go on over here in the other room and play some dominoes and spades. <laughs> and young, you young people, you can sit over here and turn up. But you don't need to turn up your nose at them. You don't need to talk bad about the young people, Diamond and Aaron, as if you guys are above everyone. That's why we sitting in the nail salon, because that's really where Diamond and Aaron should have gone, to the nail salon. Forget about going out and having some Moscato wine <laughs> and drinking Moscato wine like it's shots of tequila. I mean, Diamond turned up that Moscato wine like it was a shot of Casa Amigos tequila. Girl, wine is for sipping, not for juggling and taking down shots. <laughs> but they really should have just gone on to the nail shop. That's why that's our back shop, because this is what these two have in common. Aaron with his painted nails. He's about to propose to Diamond, and now we got this cliffhanger. Is Diamond going to say yes? Is Diamond going to say no? What's she going to say? We know they don't want to be at this 90s party. They really should have just gone on to the nail salon, got their pedicure and their manicure, and said, hey, does this, look, does this color look good on me? 
does this nail color look good on me? Dr. Dr. Allie tried to tell them that why don't y'all just worry about yourself and stop trying to be in other people's business. But she said it more professionally than I did. That's why I ain't no real therapist. And Dr. Allie is the real therapist because the way I say stuff is ghetto. <laughs> But Dr. Alley is professional. But what Dr. Alley did say was the same thing I've been saying. And that is Aaron and Diamond are like Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. And that's why I can still say that Diamond and Aaron can make a good couple. Because they are wrong, 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 wrong in what they do. But they wrong together. <laughs> they are wrong together. And I mean to tell you, they are backing up each other right now all the way. Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. And pretty soon, I believe they're going to have matching uh, fingernail polish color. <laughs> I think in the end, they're going to paint their nails the same kind of way because they are thick as thieves. Thick as thieves, just like Bonnie and Clyde. So is, is Diamond going to say yes to Aaron? Something tells me she's going to say yes. She's going to say yes because she's going to accept that ring on her finger. Now, does that mean she'll go through with the wedding and they'll actually get married? That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. But is Diamond going to say no to Aaron when he's on one knee with a ring in his hand? And we hope it's a ring, not cubic zirconia. It's a real diamond for diamond, a real diamond for diamond. I'm going to say it is. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I think she's going to say yes. She's going to say yes to the proposal. She's going to put that ring on her finger. Now, will they make it to the altar? That's a whole nother story. <laughs> because as Diamond said, her sister don't believe Aaron can take care of her. And I don't know if that means financially. I don't know what. So we'll see. We'll have to see next week. Will she say yes to the ring or no to the ring? So it looks like, y'all, we got one more episode. One more episode. So I hope you guys will join me next week for the finale, the last episode. And is this show going to have a reunion? <laughs> I wonder if this show is going to have a reunion. I don't think it's going to have a reunion because um, I think someone said this show was taped over two years ago, which means more than likely they didn't record a reunion for it. Um, but we shall see. We shall see. But that's it, y'all. Talk to you later. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video, please. And don't forget to leave your comments down below. That's it. Bye. Bye.